Hey, it's Metacosis Perfectionaires, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll talk about genome editing and CAR T cell. We use CAR T cell, by the way, to target and kill cancers. With that being said, now let's get started. Genome editing is gene editing. Your genome is your genes. What is the gene? The gene is a part of the DNA. What is the definition of genome editing? Editing the genome changing the DNA. So these are technologies with the ability to change or edit the organism's DNA, your DNA. What do you mean by change or edit? I mean, you can add genes, you can remove, or you can alter them or change them. What is the approach? We have several approaches. Indeed, we can use zinc finger, TAL effector nucleus. We have mega TAL and the famous CRISPR-Cas system, and we have three of these, CRISPR-Cas9, CRISPR-Cas12, and CRISPR-Cas13. This sounds so complicated, so let's make it simple. Dr. Stephen Covey once said, begin with the end in mind. What are you trying to achieve? So here is the deal. Let's go back to square one. You know, your body is made of systems. Each system has organs. Each organ has a group of tissue. And each tissue has cells. Each cell has a nucleus. Each nucleus has DNA. And DNA, of course, has genes. So the cell has a nucleus and nucleus has chromosomes, about 46 of them, assuming that it's a somatic cell. And then the chromosome has heterochromatin, then the euchromatin, which is less condensed, and then the DNA is wrapping around histones. This is the DNA. Of course, it has the famous double helix. What if you have a problem here? Oh, we can remove this area and put a new area so that you don't have a problem. Bingo! So here is your lovely DNA. You have a bad gene here. Let's remove it, cut it, and then put a new part here so that you're great. And now the definition actually makes sense. Ability to change the organism's DNA. Yes, we will remove the bad part and put a new part in it. And these are the methods and we will focus on the CRISPR-Cas system. We have 9, 12 and 13. We'll focus more on CRISPR-Cas9. Now let's talk about CRISPR-Cas9. What does CRISPR mean? Clustered, regularly, interspaced, short, palindromic. Wow. And Cas is the CRISPR associated protein, CRISPR associated, CAS, CAS is CRISPR associated, so CRISPR and CRISPR associated, and CRISPR is clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic. Okay, CRISPR-Cas9, what is this? Is the RNA guided protein. Remember, you have a bad gene in your DNA. We're trying to cut it away and paste a new gene that's functioning. So, it's an adaptive immunological defense system of certain bacteria that defends against invading bacteriophages and plasma. Now, let's go back a sec. Remember your immunity. Your lovely immunity had two types. Number one was the innate immunity, and the other one was the acquired or adaptive immunity. What type are we talking about? The acquired or the adaptive immunity, which is more specific. I mean, specialized. Of course, the poor bacteria has to defend itself against invaders, against the bacteriophages and plasmids because these are the invaders. So how can we copy the genius of the bacteria and instead of attacking the invaders, attacking the bad gene and then replacing it with a good gene? So here, let's learn from the bacteria. When bacteria detect viral DNA, the invader, it releases two short RNA sequences. These are very important. Number one is the G RNA. The second one is the Cas9 endonuclease. G for what? G for guide. We call this the guide RNA. Why guide? Because it will recognize and it will guide to match the desired target gene, which is the viral DNA. So here is the bacterial RNA. It will match by base pairing with the viral DNA like this. And of course, you know, like A with T, but RNA doesn't have T. So A with U and G with C and C with G. You know the rest of the story, right? Classic base pairing. So this is the guide RNA. Cool. What is the other short RNA sequence? It's the Cas9 endonucleus. Cas, so the C, it cuts, it cleaves, it breaks down the double-stranded DNA, allowing for modification to the genome. Remember your gene. Your gene had a problem. We're trying to correct the problem. How do we cut this? You cut it using Cas9 because it cuts, it cleaves 
the double-stranded DNA, allowing for modification. In order for me to be able to access this part, I have to cut from here and cut from here. How do you do it? Cas9 endonuclease. Once you cut it, you can modify it. All right, great. How did you identify this area precisely? Using the G. It guided me to match this specific area by base pairing. Now it makes sense. So here is the story. How CRISPR-Cas9 modify the genome. Remember, this is your DNA. It has a bad area, bad gene. Okay. First, we would like to recognize the bad area. How do you recognize it? Using the guide RNA, gRNA. How did it recognize? Base pairing, baby. Cool. This is step number one to recognize. Then you cut it from here and here. Who's going to cut? Cas9 endonuclease. It cleaves the DNA, the double-stranded DNA. It cuts it down. Cool. So Cas9 cleaves the double-stranded DNA. Great. Put, okay. Remove this. Cut and paste. Paste what? A new functioning gene. And this is called modification. The modification could be adding or deleting, if you remember. How? Using the cell owns DNA repair machinery. Your cell knows how to repair it, repair this area, and it will bind these sticky ends together. Cool. So who recognized the bad area? GRNA. Who cut and cleaved this bad area? Cas9 endonuclease. Who's gonna ligate them together? Your own DNA repair machinery, such as the DNA ligase, for example. And now we have two types of DNA repair, homologous and non-homologous. The non-homologous is as mutation, could be insertion or deletion. That's why we call it non-homologous. Okay, great. So let's recap. You had your DNA. It had a bad area. First, recognize it. Second, cut. Third, insert and ligate. Awesome. How do we deliver this amazing CRISPR-Cas system into your cell to repair your defective gene? You have two methods. Plasmid-based method. The plasmid is like a circular genetic material. Or the Cas9 protein complex. You can use it with single gene RNA or ribonucleoprotein. Okay, so we were able to recognize the bad area in your DNA, cut it and replace it with good genes. What are the clinical applications of CRISPR-Cas9? Bazillion things. Cut and paste genes into the DNA. Absolutely. Correct the errors. Yep. Turn on or off the genes. You can add something to turn it on. You can add something to turn it off. Cure several diseases such as single gene disorders. Yep, because if there is one gene, that's the problem. We can remove this bad gene and replace it with good gene. Inherited disorders, blood disorders, cancers, heart disease, and mental illnesses. Cure genetic disorders and repair defective DNA. Ethical questions, alteration of human genomes, and changing germline cells of an embryo. These raise ethical questions. Remember, here everything is either a C or an R. Now let's talk about the fascinating world of CAR T cell therapy. Why? What is CAR? Chimeric antigen receptor T cell. You know the T cell? You know you had B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes? Yep, T lymphocytes. These are white blood cells. What is CAR? Chimeric antigen receptor. Receptor, I get it. Antigen, I get it. It's a receptor that will recognize the antigen. Cool. What is chimeric? Chimeric means double. Okay, dual. It had two origins, sometimes human origin and monkey origin. That's chimeric. So chimeric means two. So define CAR T cell immunotherapy. Oh yeah, it has T cell. That helps the T cell recognize the antigen using its receptor on the surface of a cancer in order to attack the freaking cancer. So here is your lovely T lymphocyte. This is called T cell. Now add CAR to it. CAR is this lovely receptor and this lovely receptor will recognize the antigen. Where is the antigen? On the surface of the cancer cell. Once the T lymphocyte is able to recognize the antigen on the surface of cancer cell, rest in peace cancer go to hell we don't want you so car t kills tumors car t kills tumor the car is destroying the tumor chimeric means two why two because car t has two functions it has an antigen binding function yes indeed it happened and it has a t cell activation function yep 
How does it work? First, you get blood from the patient. Just take the T cell, separate the T, and return the rest of the blood back to the patient. How do you separate it? Called apheresis. The word pheresis means combine. Apheresis, no combination, i.e. separation. And then you return the blood back to the patient. Now you got the T cell. What do you do? Genetically engineer it. Introduce the receptor and then the receptor will be able to recognize the antigen where is the antigen on the surface of the cancer now the cancer is history well done let's go to the real world car t cell therapy we have chimeria which came from chimeric and this is directed against cd19 as you know cd19 20 and 21 are on the b lymphocytes and therefore they will attack the b cell cancer such as diffuse large b cell lymphoma and ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Or yes, CART, yes, yes, CART, yes to the CAR T cell therapy. Yes, CART, love it. B cell again, diffuse large B cell lymphoma, primary mediastinal B cell lymphoma, high grade B cell lymphoma. Now let's talk about recombinant DNA technology. What is that? We use genetic engineering to study segments of your DNA. Cool. How do you do it? Splice foreign DNA fragments. These are genes because a gene is a piece of the DNA. And then cut it into small pieces. And these are called replicating molecules. Example here is the bacterial plasma. The bacterial plasma is a circular genetic material. And then amplify this fragment and clone it using the bacterial machine. What are the tools? We have chimeric molecules, restriction enzymes, vectors, host bacteria, and others. We'll talk about chimeric molecules and then vectors. Let's do it. What does chimeric mean? Two sources. Yep, blue and green. What is the blue? This is the plasmid. What is the green? This is the desired sequence. This sequence is so good, we'd like to copy it into millions of copies. Let's do it, baby. Cut this area. Good. Add it to the plasmid. Good. Now the plasmid had the desired sequence. Okay, bacteria, you are already going to replicate because that's your function in life. Okay, we'll add the plasmid to you, please. While replicating yourself into two separate offspring cells, please replicate our plasmids with you. Cool. Done. Here is the bacteria in the petri dish. Here is the desired area. Here is the plasmid. Add them together. Sticky ends. Base pairing. DNA ligase. Thank you so much. Add them to the bacteria. Millions of copies. You're welcome. We are done with the chimeric. Let's talk about the vectors. What does the word vector mean? A carrier. A carrier. Yeah, this is a vector DNA that will carry this green area. Cool. This green area made the bacteria resistant to ampicillin, but the bacteria is infecting me. I would like it to be sensitive to ampicillin so that ampicillin can kill it. Oh, easy. You see this area green? Yep, interrupt it with other sequence or other gene. Now it's interrupted. If it's interrupted, it's useless. Now the bacteria is not resistant to ampicillin. Actually, the bacteria is sensitive to ampicillin. You can give ampicillin to kill the bacteria. Vectors are cloning vectors or expression vectors. Which one will permit expression? Of course, the expression vectors. They are inserted next to the bacterial transcription and translation signal. Why? Because they want to express themselves, and this is the location to be. Some have restriction site near the lac operon. The lac operon is a completely different topic. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.